My dear brothers and sisters, aloha. I'm humbled and honored to speak to you today. Thank you, President Kush, and to everyone at Ensign College for this invitation to speak. I have prayed and pondered for guidance on what I should say. There have been many themes and thoughts that have come to my mind, but as I have earnestly sought guidance from the Holy Ghost, I have received imp impressions to think of you, who you are, where you come from, and where you want to go. As my mind went in that direction, I quickly realized how special you are. I quickly realized how blessed you are. You are truly an ensign to the world. You are a standard of goodness to all. You are part of the church educational system. You are part of the Lord's educational system. You are at a school that has the highest form of endorsement. It has celestial accreditation. You are part of the only two-year institution of higher education in the Lord's educational system. You come from all 50 states in the United States. You represent 60 countries from around the world. You are 30% international students. Almost half of you are returned missionaries. You are in the early part of your adult lives when critical decisions will be made that will affect the rest of your lives and determine your eternal destiny. The Book of Mormon tells the story of the valiant 2,000 stripling warriors. You are the valiant 3,000 students of, the, of our Heavenly Father's choicest children from around the world. Wow, what a group. With those types of qualifications and divine lineage, you have limitless potential. You are here at Ensign College preparing for life. You are studying and working hard to acquire knowledge and skills that will prepare you for a better future for you and for your family. Uh, we are all here on earth preparing for a better life, the best life, eternal life. As I stated earlier, I had several thoughts and impressions for topics, but it wasn't until our recent general conference when my thoughts became crystal clear of what I wanted to share with you today. Like every general conference, this past general conference was simply amazing. We are so blessed to live in a time when President Russell M. Nelson is the prophet of God. I loved all the talks. There are many landmark talks. The Lord's church is a global church. 20 new temples announced during a global pandemic. Wow. But I have based my remarks on Elder Bednar's talk on righteous principles. Elder Bednar taught a gospel principle is a doctrinally based guideline for the righteous exercise of moral agency. Principles derived from broader gospel truths and provide direction and standards as we press forward on the covenant path. I would like to share with you three righteous principles that have blessed my life three principles that have kept me grounded in a world of ever-changing moral values, three principles that have kept me steadfast in the storms of life, three principles that have kept me and my family safe from the cunning of the adversary. Principle number one, always put the Lord first. If the Lord is always first, everything always works out. Everything falls into place. It doesn't mean it's going to be easy or there won't, any be, won't be any tough times. It may not work out the way you want or in the timing that you want, but it always works out and ultimately in the best possible way. When you put the Lord first, everything always works out for the best. In 3 Nephi 13, 33, we read, but seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things shall be added unto you. Let me share a story of putting the Lord first. I'm from Laie, Hawaii. It is a small town on the North Shore of Oahu. The majority of the uh, people of this community are members of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. When the church first bought the property, it was an undeveloped area of land and nothing really to sustain a community of people. Many people wondered why anyone would buy property on this side of the island. The priority in purchasing this land was to build a temple. After the temple was built, 
the church built the Church College of Hawaii, now known as BYU Hawaii. Next, the church built the Polynesian Cultural Center. The PCC, as it is also known, was built to provide jobs for college students and to preserve their cultural traditions. When it was first built, critics scoffed and said that it would never survive or be successful due, its, due to its distance from Waikiki and all the major hotels. The Polynesian Cultural Center today is the number one tourist attraction in the entire state of Hawaii. Laie is now a beautiful, thriving little town with a temple, a university, the Polynesian Cultural Center, other restaurants, a beautiful Marriott Hotel, the busiest supermarket in Hawaii, and all of this located on now prime real estate that was once considered undesirable. The logical thought process would probably have been to build the Polynesian Cultural Center first, so people would have jobs and therefore be able to provide for the temporal needs. Or maybe it would have been to build the college first so people could get an education and maybe the university could be a source of jobs for the people in the community. I bear you my testimony that everything worked out for the best in this community and its people because they put the Lord first and built the temple first. If there was any other order, things would not have worked out. As you're starting your lives, don't let the cares of the world or the demands of life change your eternal priorities and perspectives. Always seek the things of God first. Always have your covenants and spiritual goals first. President Ezra, Ezra Taft Benson said, when we put God first, all other things fall into their proper place or drop out of our lives. Our love of the Lord will govern the claims of our affection, the demands of our time, the interests we pursue, and the order of our priorities. It doesn't mean that you can't work hard for your education or your career. It doesn't mean that you can't be financially successful, but temporal or materialistic possessions or accomplishments can never be first on your priority list. No matter the stresses of life, no matter the temptations of life, and no matter the trials of life, always keep the Lord first in the priorities of life, of things that matter most. The apostles are great examples of putting the Lord first. All of them are well-educated. All of them are very successful in their chosen professions or careers. Their career bios are very impressive, but more impressive and more powerful are their testimonies and the lives that they live as servants of the Lord. Their love of the Lord and submitting to his will are the top of their priorities. Principle number two, pay your tithing. In the Old Testament, we read, bring ye all the tithes into the storehouse, that there may be meat in my house, and prove me now herewith, saith the Lord of hosts, if I will not open the windows of heaven and pour out a blessing, that there shall not be room enough to receive it. And I will rebuke the devourer for your sakes, and he shall not destroy the fruits of your ground. Neither shall your vine cast her fruit before the time in the field, saith the Lord of hosts. Maybe as a young college student, your finances may be maybe uh, may have some limits. And you might think the Lord understands, I need this money, so you don't pay your tithing. Yes, the Lord understands and he is merciful and he sees and knows all things, but he won't be able to open up the windows of heaven for you and pour out a blessing that there shall not be room enough to receive it if you don't pay your tithing. He won't be able to rebuke the devourer for your sake and protect your fruits if you don't pay your tithing. When you get married and things might get a little tight financially, you might be tempted to pay your other bills over paying your tithing. My dear brothers and sisters, prove the Lord herewith. Invest in the Lord. Your compound interest of blessings that you will receive will not be room enough to receive it. When you invest in the Lord, there is always a return on your investments. He always fulfill his promises and his part of covenants. For my wife and I, 
there were several times as a young married couple when it looked like we wouldn't be able to meet our essential financial obligations. But we always faithfully paid our tithing and things always worked out. If you start to become financially secure in your life and have an abundance of surplus of financially, remember who opened the windows of heaven for you. Don't forget him. All that we have, all that he has blessed us with, in the end is all his. He doesn't need the money. He has all the power and worlds without ends. He asks, all he asks is for 10% back of what he in reality gave us. This is to help us build his kingdom and accomplish his, his works. When we pay tithing, we're actually paying ourselves because the Lord is really blessing us. The blessings of tithing are not all temporal. In fact, most of them, most of the blessings are spiritual. Tithing is really a principle of faith. Principle number three, honor the Sabbath day. In Doctrine and Covenants we read, and that thou mayest more fully keep thyself unspotted from the world, that thou shalt go to the house of prayer and offer up thy sacraments upon the hope my holy day. For verily, this is a day appointed unto you to rest from your labors and to pay thy devotions unto the Most High. I have been a college football coach for 32 years. College football is an extremely competitive and ruthless profession. Sundays are the most important day in college football in your weekly game preparation. You review the previous game and then you start your game plan preparation for your next opponent. My sign to the Lord, as President Nelson taught a couple of years ago, is that I will love and honor him by honoring the Sabbath day. Since I became a head football coach 14 years ago and became in charge of my, making my own schedule, I have not worked on Sundays. Renewing my covenants with the Lord every Sunday by partaking of the sacrament with my family is the best way that I know to prepare myself to be my best husband, father, state president, coach, citizen. I bear my testimony that many of the blessings that my family and I have received are a direct result of honoring the Sabbath day. I once spoke at a national coaching convention and I shared that my staff does not work on Sundays. And I received so many emails and so many calls asking how we've been so successful over the years when we don't work on Sundays. I know that the Lord will bless you and your family if you honor him by honoring the Sabbath day. Don't let the pressures of school, the demands of your career or your profession, professional life manipulate you into not honoring the Sabbath. Now, if your employer requires you to work on Sundays and there's no way of getting around it, the Lord understands your situation because he is all knowing and he knows your heart. I promise you that he will eventually work things out where you will no longer be in that situation. I bear you my testimony that Ensign College was established by divine design. President Cush was called by God to lead this great institution. The Lord has given us righteous principles to govern and bless our lives. I pray that you will use righteous principles in your daily decisions to keep you on the covenant path. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen.